Okay, in this part, uh, let's consider a uh, one-dimensional example of uh, the Monte Carlo solution of a uh, partial differential equation. Uh, this example is the one-dimensional di one form of the Laplace equation, or the second derivative of temperature, for example, uh, is a zero. This is not a partial differential equation anymore. This is an OD, but uh, I want to, uh, to perform uh, the Monte Carlo procedure uh, as an example for this uh, simple equation. Uh, we, have, we have three steps. The first step is to kind of discretize the equation. The next one is to perform the random walk. And the third step is to compute the temperature at uh, your desired point. Okay, uh, this is the governing equation. We, this example uh, is based on the fixed step Monte Carlo method. So I need a grid point, I need a grid or a computational or a, the Monte Carlo grid at the beginning of the solution. This is my grid points. As you see, the boundary condition at the left wall is 1, t equals 1. And the temperature on the left wall is 0. And uh, as you, again, the process is steady state. And the, the thickness of the wall is 1 unit. Uh, the solution of this uh, differential equation is the linear distribution. It can be easily, it's, it's very straightforward to obtain that. The, linear, the, the blue line in the figure is the solution of the governing equation, which is a linear distribution. Exact solution is the linear distribution. Uh, for the sake of simplicity, I have selected four grid points. Two of them are on walls with given temperatures. And two of them are inside the um, domain, or they are internal nodes. This is the first step, which is the discretization of the equation. I want you to compute the temperature of point 1. P1 means point 1, which is this one, the temperature of this point. The exact solution is 2 over 3, because this is the linear distribution starting from 0 and ending um, at t equals 1, so uh, the temperature of this point is 2 over 3 or approximately 0.67. Okay, uh, this is what the first step. I can compare the accuracy of the Monte Carlo method with the, with the exact solution. Okay, let's start the next step, which is the random walk process. I need to generate random numbers, and based on our rules, we uh, will construct the random walk process. We had two uh, important rules. The first uh, rule was the process of traveling from one node to the other. Here, as you see, if the random generated random number is less than 0.5, you have to go to the left. This is my convention. Uh, you can interchange these definitions. Uh, go to the left point, and if the generated random number is greater than 0.5, you have to go to the right point. This is the rule, the first rule of the game. And the next uh, rule is that if during the random walk process, if you reach a, temp a node on the wall with given temperature, you have to terminate the process and save the temperature of the wall. Okay, let's start the game. Uh, I have uh, already generated, uh, I guess, 17 random numbers, but I didn't write them on the board. Uh, and uh, these are the results of uh, the random walk process using uh, those 17 random numbers. You can generate your own random numbers by hand, easily by hand, and play this game by yourself. The first, uh, you have to start from the point uh, which you need to compute the temperature of that point. So the point one is the <coughs> first point, note, so or the starting point. Uh, as you see, all of these random blocks start from point one. This is the advantage of the Monte Carlo method, is that you can compute the temperature of a point without paying attention to the temperature of other points. Okay, uh, the first uh, random number is greater than uh, point, uh, 0.5. So as you see, based on 
our rule, uh, the, the random walker goes from point one to point two, point one to point so, uh, to the right. So as you see, the random number is greater than, the first random number is greater than 0 0.5, so the walker goes from one to two. The second random num uh, number uh, is uh, less than 0 0.5, so the walker returns back to point one. Point one to two, two to one. And the third random number, again, is less than 0 0.5, so the walker goes from point one to zero, to left. And uh, the point zero is located on a wall with a given temperature. This is the end of the random walk process based on our second rule. And at this uh, level, at this step, you have to save the magnitude of the temperature at the wall. So the temperature of this wall is 1. Save 1 in a, uh, in a parameter or in a symbol in, in computer, your computer code. Then start the second random walk. Again from uh, the point 1. The, fir the fourth, 1, 2, 3, 4, the fourth ra random generated random number is less than 0 0.5, so you have to go to the left neighboring one, which is again a wall. So the second random walk terminates here. And again, you have to uh, score or to save the magnitude of the temperature of the left wall, which is again 1. The uh, next random walk again terminates at the left wall. So uh, the third uh, the wall temperature is 1, but the fourth, pay attention to the fourth uh, random walk. You, uh, you go from point 1 to 2, and uh, from 2 to 3, both random numbers in this random walk are greater than 0 0.5. So you have two successive motions to the right node point. So you reach the, uh, the right wall with the temperature of zero. So the temperature of the wall at the end of the fourth random walk is zero. Uh, for example, by to the fifth, uh, you go from point one to two, uh, two to one, again one to two and two to three. And you reach the wall, uh, the right wall with the zero temperature. You may ask a question here, if, uh, is it possible to uh, to create a, uh, or to form a closed loop inside the domain. It means I go from point one to two and two to one, one to two, two to one. It's not possible because the process of generation of random numbers is an ergodic process. Yeah, it means that you will uh, definitely reach a wall during the random walk process. Uh, the fifth uh, wall temperature is zero, sixth one is zero again, seventh one is one, eighth one is one, and ninth one is zero. You can continue this process to one million random walk numbers, of course not by yourself, uh, by means of a computer. The third step of the Monte Carlo method is to compute the temperature of the point P1 sub 1. Uh, as I explained in previous videos, the temperature of the point P1 is the sum of all walls, the temperature of walls at the end of uh, all random walks divided by the number of random walks. As you see, the number of random walks in, in this example is 9, so the denominator is 9. And the numerator is the sum of 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, which is 5. So the temperature, the estimated temperature of point uh, P1, this point, is 5 over 9, which is approximately 0 0.56. Amazingly, compare the result of the Monte Carlo method with the exact solution, which is 0 0.67. You, you see, we are, we are playing a simple game. Uh, I didn't use any extraordinary difficult mathematical knowledge. I just uh, play a game. I went from one point to the other, randomly, completely randomly, and I obtained 
a solution, uh, solution which is uh, very close to the exact solution, and uh, the relative error is 17%. Repeat this random block process for 1 million times, for example, 100 times, 1000 times, you will, uh, the, the result of the Monte Carlo method will converge to the exact solution, but the process of convergence is not monotone. It means that if you um, add some new random box, the error may increase. Uh, but if the number of random box uh, goes to infinity, the result definitely will converge to the exact solution.